Hey Vlad here, devinsciety.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous video, we implemented the rendered method on our simple binary search trees, and today we're going to convert them to the so-called red black trees. However, we're only going to implement the insert method for the reasons that I'm gonna explain after the intro. Let's get started. <music> As always, we're in the Ubuntu virtual machine. Now we have Sublime on the left and the regular terminal on the right, which runs SBT, which runs our tests every time we save the file. Now, here's the deal. Um, I said it already that, you know, in many occasions that I'm not super crazy about, um, you know, computer science -y algorithms, especially since this playlist is still targeting uh, people who are relatively new to programming. And also, uh, I remember in the beginning, I, I, I initially wanted to, to use collections just as a vehicle to introduce parametric polymorphism and uh, implicits. And we already have more than 10 videos and we got the parametric polymorphism all right, but uh, we still didn't, didn't get anywhere near um, implicits, okay? And also we're still just implementing sets, okay? Uh, which is kind of crazy. Now, this means that originally I didn't even want to implement red black trees, but then I realized that I get to play with colors and we all know how much I like that. So here we are. All right, so our sets have a tiny problem. In fact, it's a big problem. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to running instead of compile, instead of running tests like this, okay? And I'm gonna implement the tiny main method, object main extends, extends app. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna have my hyphens as always 50 okay so if I have a set which starts with a zero and uh, I'm gonna create a range over here from 1 to 19 so I'm gonna create a set from 0 to to, uh, to 19 basically with, with, with 20 elements uh, remember that the factory um, method on on sets in fact if we go to factory uh, we actually see it so it, it wants the first element and then it wants this bar arcs elements right but what we're passing it is something like a sequence so it's, this is a range so we can use a, a type description but instead of giving it a type we can use this weird syntax thing to um, to let it know that what what is what is happening is that that it should take this range and convert it into into this syntax right so instead of doing that basically what it will do for me is is, is doing that right all, all, all of this until 18 and 19 right so this is just a shorter way uh, shorter way to do that so if I have this set and I want to I want to render it it's gonna look like this so what you, what you see here is basically that the tree uh, degenerates to a list and all, all the functions um, become instead of instead of having logarithmic complexity they they're getting the linear complexity which is which is way way worse uh, in fact maybe maybe this is actually more visible if we if we could go the other way around if we could produce a uh, left leaning uh, tree right so if we start with a set of 19 and then we go from 18 to 0 by minus 1 negative 1 convert it to the var args stuff rendered uh, it's going to be even, even more visible because then we won't have those pipes yeah so this is this is what we have so it's supposed to be a tree relatively balanced tree but it actually degen de degenerated to uh, to a single link list basically so red black trees are one way to implement the so-called self balancing trees right so there are there are other ways but the red black trees are the most uh, prominent ones for example there are also like uh, scapegoat trees uh, avl trees uh, treeps weight balance trees and so on and so on and so on there are there are many many others so but the red black trees are the most popular ones so this is also the ones that that we're gonna go with the idea behind self balancing trees is that after every insertion and after every removal uh, we're, we're going to balance the tree right automatically it's got it's got to get balanced okay a uh, quick reminder we're doing like completely functional trees which means um, every time we're doing any sort of uh, repainting rebalancing restructuring it, it, it means that we're rebuilding the tree from scratch right so we're basically creating new subtrees and obviously the less we recreate the better all right so there's this very very famous professor called Chris Okasaki and he became famous because he he wrote a book about purely functional data structures called purely functional data structures and he also wrote a paper um, about red black trees in a functional setting this is also how it was called um, where he showed an insanely simple way of creating red black trees um, and to be, to be more specific, he only showed how to do the insertion and uh, he, he left the removal out. Now, removal is a bit more involved, but it's not impossible. Obviously, it has been done, right? Um, I, I just don't find it like super, super interesting. As I, as I said, like I'm not big on, you know, computer, uh, computer uh, science algorithms. So I don't find it interesting enough to, um, to implement it because it's kind of big. It's, 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 it, it doesn't really fit the, you know, this whole uh, video format. However, there are solutions out there and um, I found a solution for you. Uh, so if you're really interested, it's, it's also in Scala and, uh, you know, all 
check all the links in the description. There's going to be like, I don't know, around 10 links in the description to uh, to papers about this and, and all of the good stuff, okay? Now, here's the deal. We can't implement just the insertion and leave the removal out because the problem is that one removal will uh, ruin the balance so much that even a consecutive insertion is not, going to, is not going to be able to fix it. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to learn about Git today and we're going to create a completely different branch right so it's like a different branch in the history uh, where we're going to implement the red black tree and then in the next video uh, whatever whatever it's going to be about we're just going to go back and pretend like it's never happened also how how cool is it that i can use fancy words like sets and trees to explain to you how uh, git works so what is happening behind git is so also how, how we have been using git is uh, in a way that is usually not used so if you're one developer you just have this one master branch and you just commit and commit 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 and commit commit and commit committing so what it ends up looking uh, basically the same the same as over here but it is actually a tree so uh, if we're over here somewhere in our master branch we can actually branch off give, give the branch a name do something else and then either remove it or continue or then merge it into back into the into the main line or just go back and pretend like it never happened right so um every every commit is essentially a node in the tree uh, which denotes the so-called change set it's the set of changes right and it's called a set because it's literally a set all right so what are red black trees well red black trees are the simple binary search trees as we had them before you know binary search tree like this right so because it's a it's not just a binary tree it's a search tree it means that everything that is on the left is smaller than um, than the stuff on the right in our case we have you know we have hash sets so we don't use just smaller we, we've seen smaller or equals because we have to accommodate for uh, hash collisions but it doesn't actually really matter so i'm going to revert them All right so in a red black tree every node in addition to so, so so in scala you know every every node it uh it contains you know the element right the element and then it contains the left branch and the red branch right so red black tree also has a uh, fourth element uh, fourth fourth property uh, which is the color right so usually usually it's a boolean we're going to use something more fancy for that but essentially it's, it's either true or false so it's either red or black right uh, i'm going to see how how easy it is for me to switch colors here so uh, basically red black trees uh, look like this usually the um the, the node is usually black right and uh occasionally you know i'm gonna i'm gonna just, just make like some like very similar to the red black tree. All right, like this. So you basically have red nodes and you have black nodes, okay? What, what is important is to know that there is no third option, right? The node has to have a color. It has to be either red or black. And the colors are simply cho cho uh, chosen like this because, uh, you know, when they were invented, uh, these were the markers that were used to draw them on the whiteboard, right? So there's nothing special about them. All right, now there are obviously rules to insert, you know, to, for, for choosing the color. So if the, if the node is going to be uh, red or black, and, and, you know, to be more specific, there are, there are five rules and we're going to go through them uh, real quick, right? So, so for a colorful tree to be a proper red, black tree, you have to follow all of these uh, five rules. And five sound, sounds like a lot, but actually three of them are super, super obvious. Okay, so um, the, the goal of this thing is to make sure that the red black tree is balanced. So it's not the goal is not to, to make sure that it is complete, right? So that you know the, the last layer is completely like full filled out like from left to right. No, it's it just that it, there's balance. So it can happen that you will end up uh, with a tree um, still black. It doesn't really matter actually. You might end up with a with a tree that looks like this, for example. Right, it's still a, it's still a valid red black, red black tree. Like, assuming that the colors are also fine, right? So it's, it's it's supposed to be like roughly balanced. I think like what you what you can end up with is like maximum of um, I don't know like two. I think I think like maximum of two um, like sort of unbalanced layers. Um, I, I think I think more than that is not possible. In any case, so the goal is that uh, if you have a tree and you have a pass from from some nodes, right? So if all of them are black. Right, then if you compare that to a to another path uh, with the red nodes, um, sorry, not with the red nodes. Hold on, I'm gonna do it like that. I'm gonna do it like that. What am I doing? No, that's fine. I just need another another line over here like that okay and another red red node so the idea is that the longest possible pass and the longest possible pass is the one where the uh, black and red nodes are alternating right so there's black red black red black red is maximum twice as long as the pass with the black nodes right so in in, in a tree with with this structure 
what what you know the the, the, the smallest pass will be a a tree with only two black nodes, right? Because there's one and there's two, and you have five rules that that make sure that um, that this this path, that the length of this path will remain like this. And if it remains like this, then then the tree is going to be balanced, right? So the, the again, the longest tree is the one with the alternating uh, nodes is at maximum twice as long as the shortest pass. And the shortest pass is the one with only the only the black nodes. Okay, uh, I know that it was a bit confusing. Uh, let's let's just go through the five rules, and maybe it's going to become more clear uh, how these five rules make make sure of that. All right, so let me remove everything. Okay, so the first the first three rules are, are super super simple. So every every node is either red or black. All right. The sec the second rule is that the root is black. Very very <laughs> very very simple rule. Okay. Now the the third rule is that all leaves are black. Leaves are black now you have to be really careful with, with leaves because usually if you have a tree like that then uh, actually let me make it bigger right so usually the leaves are these ones like the last ones okay but for all uh, the implementations of red black trees you, you also always have um, have the empty ones right so you have this one and this one even though then they're, they're not actually nodes like in code you will have you know an empty here right they're sometimes also called nil and whatever whatever right so uh, all, all the leaves are black so right so this layer can still be red right so let's make it red so this layer can still be red right but the leaves are going to be black right so the leaves are black right and even though like these elements don't exist they're still black they you, you sort of kind of pretend like like like, like as if they this uh, as if they exist and then they're black and as I said like the root the root is also black Okay. Now the fourth and the fifth rule are actually the one the one that are, that are important. So the fourth rule is basically, and there, and there are many ways to describe this, and basically saying that there there can be no path. Um, no, I'm sorry. There can be no direct link from a red node to another red node. Right. So there are, there are many ways to describe this. Uh, another one, uh, another way would be to say, okay, no red node has a red parent, or every red node has to have two black um, children. Right. So um, basically, you can you can have red siblings. Like this, All right? So you have like these two, these red ones, they're siblings. That's fine, but you can't have like a, a link between a red node to another red node. So this one can't be red because this one's already red. Also because this one is red, like this one can't be red and this one can't be red, right? So this is the fourth rule. Um, so fourth rule, um, no path. Um, actually, it's not, it's not a path. I'm gonna say no link, no link between between red nodes. Okay, and the fifth rule is the, the last one that, that, that is remaining. I'm gonna switch the color to black because like this one is very, very, um, I'm sorry, this one is very, very specific for, you know, this is very, very about, about the red nodes, okay? So th the fifth rule is actually very, very interesting. It says that every path from the root node, from this one, to 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 the leaf nodes, right? To the to the, to the empty ones, and this is also why, the reason why you have to have those empty nodes, that it contains the same uh, uh, amount of black uh, black nodes, right? So uh, if you go here, so this one is black. Okay, this is actually not a, not a red black. So you ignore that tree. So you have you have black, right? Then you can have black here. You can have black here. Then, for example, you could have let's let's make like all of these red, right? Red, 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 red. Okay. And let's say that this one is. I'm oh, sorry. Let's say that this one is empty, 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 empty. This is like sort of the, the classical representation of the red black tree. And um, so, if you count the nodes from 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 the root to the leaf, then every path should have the same amount uh, uh, the same amount of black nodes, right? So over here it's uh, one, two, three, right? Over here it's one, two. You skip the red node three. One, two. Skip the red node three, right? As I said, I'm probably explaining this horribly because, as, as I already mentioned many times, this is not my favorite topic. Um, so uh, I have a bunch of links for um, for um, you know papers, uh, really small, really you know clear papers um, that, that that maybe explain this a bit a bit more uh, more more properly. Uh, also, maybe like after we finished implementing it, 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 it will become uh, more clear. So let's just let's just start. 
All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, revert everything that we did today. Now, Git can, can do this for you. Like, if you haven't committed anything yet, you can, you can, Git can do this for you. But in our case, it was super, super simple. So what we will do is we're going to exit from SPT, okay? And if I type in Git branch, it will tell me that I am on the master branch. And I can also do Git branch hyphen A for all, and it will also show me the remote branches, right? So what you can do is you can create a new branch by, saying, by simply saying Git branch and then, and then giving it a name. For example, red um, hyphen black hyphen tree come on black hyphen tree now if you say branch it will say um what happened get branch sorry if you say get branch that's going to say okay you're in the master but there's also another one called red black tree so you can do git checkout red tab red black tree right so uh, now if you say get branch it will say okay so there is a master branch but now you're on the red black tree so for what we did right now uh, there's also a shortcut let me scroll down a little bit uh, actually I'm gonna press um, press control L all right so there's also a shortcut so you can do check out hyphen B uh, red black tree all right so this is a shortcut uh, so instead of saying instead of creating the branch first was git branch red black tree and then git checkout red black tree you can do git checkout hyphen B red black tree and also you can remove it with git branch hyphen D and then giving it the name of the branch right so what we also can do is we can say git log hyphen hyphen graph hyphen hyphen one line one line and we should see like this is this is all of our commits and uh by the end when, once we actually commit like one, one, once more we should, we should see like a tiny branch like bran branching over here branching off over there all right okay so uh the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to introduce the color right so we're going to have a color uh for our set so we're going to go to set um let's just have it under render let's just have it over here to say def um, color now usually a boolean is used and then you can decide you know true is going to be black and false is going to be um, red uh, well, we're going to use a simple ADT right so we're going to we're just going to have a thing called color and then when we're creating a, a, a non-empty node we're just going to pass it in color color because it's a case class it's going to be a val and then it's going to automatically uh, implement that and for the empty node over here uh, let's actually put it at the bottom right so we're going to say override um, Actually, let's actually make it protected, protected def color. Okay, so we have final override protected def color, uh, which is a color, and it's going to be color. Oh come on, color dot black because as I said, you know the empty nodes are also are always going to be black. All right, so let's create this um, th this tiny ADT, and we're just going to put it inside uh, inside of this object called set. Right, so we have this object set. We're just going to go in here at the very bottom. Uh, maybe not under the very bottom let's let's do it like over here right so we're just going to have a thing a private to the set companion object um it's actually not the private to the set companion object it's private to to the whole thing um to uh, set okay so we're going to have a sealed abstract class color and it's going to have a method called paint so you give it an element which doesn't matter uh, what, what type it is and it's going to produce a string okay so now we're going to have a private set it's the same thing as we always do, right? So this is how we always create ADTs, color, and then we're gonna have two implementations of the color. So we're gonna have a case object. There's no need to make it final because it's an object. Case object rad extends color, right? It's gonna have final override, and I'm just gonna copy that, right? Paint is going to be console.rad plus element plus console dot reset uh, actually let's go back to spt in the meantime all right and now i'm just going to copy that uh, come on copy that so we're also going to have black black over here but notice that our terminal is black so instead of the actual black color we're going to use the blue color also because it starts with a b so it's not, it's not like too much confusing and uh, it has to be like this okay so uh let's see if it's going to compile it should not compile uh because uh we actually haven't um i haven't fixed like all the all the other issues with um um, was the color so uh, we, we said that, that the non-empty should have the color but we're not passing it anywhere right so all of these places especially where we where we're pattern matching so uh, all of these cases over here all right so every time we have we have something like that let me mark it like this and let's just also introduce the color right color like that okay let's see how much that's gonna solve our issues okay so there's one at line 62 let's see over here okay this is where we're creating now so we're just gonna pass the color over here all right the other one is 48 48 okay same thing 
color. What else? Uh, 40, 40 over here, color. And uh, okay, so over here we're creating a non-empty node. So let's just say that every time we're, we're creating, we're just gonna use black, right? So I, I wanna just type black and therefore I'm also gonna import the color. So we're gonna import the set and we're also gonna import the color. I'm gonna sort it alphabetically like that. Not found value color. Oh yeah, um, it's because of this. So um, we should say set.color, right? And do it like that. All right. So access print message has wicked pre. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, when I when I defined it, I didn't make it protected. Okay. So we're gonna make it protected over here. All right. So I believe actually that I can make these guys actually private to private to set. Let's see if it's gonna work. Yeah, it, it's gonna work. All right, so so now we, we sort of have have the colors, and um, what we should do also we should go to rendered, uh, right? Our rendered method, right? And uh, when we're printing printing out our tree, so instead of just saying dot element, we should go to color and say dot paint, and then give it the element. All right. So this so we'll make sure that you know the the elements are gonna be uh, painted either either in red or in this case in this case blue. And in fact, if we run our test, our test should actually uh, fail now because remember we have the test for rendering and now they include the color so yeah so this is the test that failed so what we're going to do is we're going to run the test um, just test only the set suite right like this cool okay so as I already said we, we're just going to implement the insertion method and um, uh, where, where is it so for us we, we we kept calling it add usually it's called insert so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to maximize that okay so uh, we have pattern matching on the tree and if it's empty we're just creating a black node otherwise you know we figure out if we already have the element then we just leave the set alone otherwise if the hash code is uh, small then we insert it into the left one and otherwise we insert it into the right one so the first uh, thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a tiny refactoring right so instead of just having this pattern match uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this pattern match into a method called ins right for for insert right so it's actually going to get the set which is going to be the set of super right and it's going to produce a set of super as well equals like that like that like that so we're just going to call it ins with this and I'm going to use set over here set over here and instead of doing left.add input we're going to say ins left we don't need to pass the input because the input is uh, you know outside now we can we can just say ins left and over here we can just say ins right it's going to become clear in a few minutes why why we're doing this so all the tests should still be green because this is this is just the refactoring right so we just put it in into a into a local method over here and we're just calling it was this so it's, it does exactly the same thing um input is yeah it's all good okay okay so the okasaki's uh, algorithms um requires only two things and the first one is every time where we're inserting elements right so every time we, we create them we, we should also balance them right so we're just going to call a method called balance that we don't have yet right and we're just going to pass the whole thing into it right and do the same thing over here pass it to balance right so whatever balance is doing and in fact let's let's um, um, just stab it out over here so balance is the same as as the others you know and there's a set that comes in set of super of super comes out and for now let's just return the set right so our test should still be green because first, first of all we don't have the test for the colors and, and also we, we didn't really change anything yet right so we just you know we're making sure that it returns exactly the same thing right so what balance will do it will figure out which one of the unbalanced cases it is or maybe it is already balanced and then it will create a tree that is that is balanced right and what might happen is that it, it might create a, a tree with with a red uh, node at the top and it might create a tree with with a with a, with a uh, black um, node at the top right and this might um, might break the, the the fourth rule right because it, it does this recursively so basically at the bottom of the tree it, it does the rebalancing then it goes up it does the rebalancing then it goes up it does the rebalancing and, and so on and so on and so on so if it, if it has to right sometimes it actually leaves uh, things alone right and then it, it ends up at the top and it might happen that the top node is going to be red right so the second part of the of the algorithm is just to make the top node 
black, right? So um, the whole thing over here is just going to be made black. So it's going to be made black like this. Make black looks the same as balance. Make black. Set comes in, set, set comes out, right? So this is the an essence of the Okasagi's, um, uh, not not the essence, but like this is the this is the skeleton, okay? In fact, um, in order for you to, to simply to, to understand like more uh, which part belongs to the Okasaki thing and which part is a simple binary search tree, uh, we're going to create an, a, a class called Okasaki and, and we're going to put uh, both of these methods into it, right? So instead of that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say val uh, Okasaki. Maybe maybe we should actually do it um, capital like this. And it's going to be equal to new Okasaki. It doesn't need to have any parameters, but it does need um, the type parameter, right? This is, this is the only reason why it's a class, right? So it needs this this super thing, right? And then this Okasaki thing is going to have the dot balance, and it's going to have it over here, and it's going to have this make black, right? So all we need to do is we need to cut these out, and we need to create this tiny class so that everything still at least compiles. So I'm going to go over here. The same as we did with, with the colors. Uh, we're going to go down here. Going to create a class. Uh, it's going to be private to set. Okay, that's going to be class called Okasaki, and it's going to take some type parameter. Okay, and it's going to have. Oops, it's going to have these two methods, but super doesn't exist there now. It just has this s, right? So if I did everything properly, it should still work. All right, it still works. Okay, so before uh, going to the paper and explaining to you how balancing works, uh, we're going to implement make, make black because make black is super super simple. So all make black is doing is just match it, matching on the set that has been passed in, and if it's an empty, and then it just returns it as it is because the empty trees are, are black anyway, right? And if it's not empty, not empty, what's left? Element and right. All it does is we don't care about what, what color it was, was we're basically recreating it completely from scratch, not empty. What are you doing? None, not empty. That's what I want. Okay, so I want to make it black and just leave everything else alone, right? So this essentially, you know, you pass in a tree. If it's empty, it stays empty because it's black. And if it's not empty, then it becomes black. And it doesn't matter if it was red before or if it was black, right? So like this, you know, everything is still passing because again, our test don't actually test for, for the color. Okay, black doesn't exist here. So we're going to do, um, let's import color here. Actually import uh, color like that. And there we go. Okay, so make black or something like this. Okay, so balance. What balance will, will do is is two things. The first thing is it needs to figure out in in which of the unbalanced cases it is, and then um, to 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 uh, to fix the case by just creating a balanced tree, right? And one of those cases is going to be that the tree is already balanced, right? So it's going to say set match, uh, match, and it's going to have case like the first case, second case, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then the last case is going to be, okay, it's actually already balanced because it's none of the other cases. So I'm just going to return it as it is, right? So I'm just going to do that for now. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually look at the paper. Before I do though, it happens many times that when you have a presentation and you have like a slide with pictures, you know, you show the slide to the people and then instead of listening to you, they're going to look at this. So instead, I'm just going to be talking and then I'm going to show you the slide. So um, Okasaki showed that there are only four cases that you need to be, um, that you need to care of. And it turns out that balancing all of those cases leads to only one solution. So the illustration that I'm going to show you is going to have a problem at the top, at the right, at the bottom and on the left. And in the middle, there's going to be the solution with, with the balance tree. Right, so let's take a look. So I have it already prepared over here. Right, so this is how it looks like. Um, so this is not colorful, but basically the double ones means the black, and the single ones mean means the red note. Right, so this is the top uh, case, this is the right case, this is the bottom case, left case, and this is the solution. So notice that um, the solution will produce a node. Um, it will produce a tree with the red node at the top, and this is also one of the reasons why the last uh, the last thing that is happening is that uh, after this whole rotation and balancing or whatever, we make we make the tree uh, we make the top uh, node black. Okay, so notice that um, so so x y and and, and z right uh, or or z. Um, these are the elements, right? So x, y, and z are the elements, and you know usually usually they're numbers, right? So and they're called x, y, z because x is smaller than y and y is smaller than, th than z, right? So they're just alphabetically ordered x, y, z. The same thing is happening to a, b, c, d. So a, b, c, d are are the trees, right? So they're subtrees, and the same is happening for them. So all the elements in a are smaller than all the elements in b, and all the elements in b are smaller than all the elements in c, and smaller than all the elements in in d. Right. So uh, if you look at all the problems, uh, you'll see that all of them are still valid binary search trees. Right. They're just not valid red black trees. Right. So we have 
looking from left to right, you have A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And the same thing for X, Y, Z, it's just in two cases, you don't really see it. So, but it, but it's still like X is on the left, then you have white, uh, then you have Y on the right, and then you have Z on the right, and so on and so on and so on. All right, so you have X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, and over here, it's not really visible, but it's basically the, the same thing. So essentially, the Y over here is bigger than X, right? But it is smaller than Z, right? You just visually don't, don't really see, right? So it turns out that all of these cases, if you, if you rotate them properly, then you will end up with this one, right? So it has the red node, black, black, and that's it, right? So the invariants over here um, are, um, are broken because you have, a, you have a link between the red nodes. So X and Y are black, and you can't have a link here. Same thing over here, X and Y have a link. Same thing over here, y and z have a link. And say, same thing over here, y and z, they have a link. And this is what, what, what this rotation is going to be is going to be fixed. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a method called solution, which will produce this tree. Right? So we will give it a, b, c, d, which are going to be trees. And we're going to give it x, y, and z, which is going to be, which is going to be elements. And what it's going to produce is the set. OK, so let's, let's start uh, by doing that. So we're going to have a private method called solution over here. I'm going to actually leave the paper open, uh, private def solution and it's going to take some element and the parameter list is going to be like that so we're going to have a b c d right and i'm actually going to do that like that so there's going to be a comma here as well okay so a b c d all of these are sets right and whoops right and then we're going to have x y z x y z uh, these are going to be like that, okay? So X, Y, Z are going to be the elements, okay? And what this method will produce, it will produce a already balanced tree, right? We don't have a type for that, so we're just gonna say Z, okay? So what it is doing is it produces a non-empty, okay? Not empty with the color, right? So I'm basically, I'm just encoding that thing, right? So the top one is red, right? So it's going to be red. It's going to have something on the left, comma. I forgot to come over here. Right? It's going to have something on the right, okay? And in between, it's going to have the element, which is going to be Y, right? So this is the red Y, red Y, okay? So on the left, we have an X, A, B, and it's going to be black, right? So on the left, we have a non empty, right? Which is black. Let's actually do color equals black. On the left, we have an A over here, right? So on the left, we have an A. The element is X, and on the right we have a B. Okay, and this one over here, which is that one, okay, it's gonna be a non empty, right? The color is also gonna be black. On the left, we're gonna have a C, the element is gonna be Z, and on the right, we're gonna have a D. And this should compile. We're not using this method, this solution method. Actually, we don't see if it compiles. There we go, it does not, because it's probably called set.nonempty, and it's just not empty. There we go. Uh, unspecified value parameters element right. Uh, this usually like, every time you see this, it means that you forgot a comma somewhere, right? So we have uh, also scalary form, uh, you know, ruined the formatting here, which means that there is no comma somewhere at some point over here. We got the comma over here, like that, right? So and over here as well. There we go. Okay, so now everything compiles again. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the paper. Right. Okay. So let's just start encoding those cases, and I'm gonna say you know top, uh, right, bottom, and left. This is the order in which we're going to encode them. Right. So we're basically gonna to have to come here, and we're gonna say case. And now the same the same way as we just encoded this solution, uh, we need to pattern match on this one to figure out if this is this this is um, this case. Okay. So we're gonna start with the top one. So it's gonna be a non-empty. Right. And it's black. And on the left, it has another non-empty. And it happens to be red, right? So the X is red. Okay. Then it has an, an A on the left, right? And it has an um, X as an element. And it has a non empty on the right, which is this one. Okay. Oops. Non empty. And um, which is this one is red. And then you got the B, Y, C, right? And over here, we're gonna have the Z, and we're gonna have the D, right? This is sort of not not obvious, but like this whole thing, 
uh, was on the left, right? So this this thing is on the left, and then the element is actually just Z, and on the, what's on the right is D. Let's see if it compiles. I'm not sure if I have to say set dot. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot I forgot actually to, to finish the code. So this is the case. Right, but now we need to have the arrow to the right, and then we have to say, okay, in this case, just call solution with a b c d, a b c d x y z. Right, so all of them are going to come from this pattern match. It's going to be inserted into the solution, and then it's going to be called. Okay, so in fact, we can do just not empty. So I'm not going to do set dot. Okay, so I'm going to do this. All right, so now we're just going to continue and uh, implement all, all, all the other ones. So um, we did the top one, now we're going to do the right one, then bottom and the left, clockwise. Okay, so we have this case, and all of that will produce the same solution. Okay, so we have not empty was black, A, X, not empty was red, B, Y, not empty was red, C, Z, D, and it will produce same solution. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to duplicate this line right here. Right, all of them produce the same solution. Let's see. All right, it's fine. Okay, so let's do the bottom one. Um, in fact, uh, let me in in enable uh, word wrap. Word wrap column eighty. No, hold up. You uh, word wrap. Word wrap. There you go. Um, should probably not be column 80 automatic there we go okay so this way you see all the code and there's no um scroll bar over here okay so let's do let's do the bottom one okay so it's going to be a case not empty and it's going to be black a x not empty and we're going to have red we're going to have not empty we're going to have red b b y c okay and we're going to have a z and we're going to have a d and it's going to produce exactly the same solution, right? So there's no magic here, and if it goes too fast, it's just, it's just literally translating that to to the Scala code and just making sure that that it still compiles. Okay, and the last one is going to be the one on the left, so it's going to be not empty, the black, not empty, red, not empty, red, A X B, Y C, Z D, right? And what's going to produce is going to be the same solution like this let's see if it compiles and it does and i believe that's actually it so this is the entire algorithm right so we have the solution we have the make black and we have the balance and now let's actually print it out so i'm going to run the method that we don't that we don't actually have anymore uh, okay so we're running a method that does not exist okay so let's do object main extends app over here I'm gonna do my usual hyphens hyphens whoops too much uh, what am I doing all right so let's have this thing that we had before okay so we have a set which starts with a zero and it goes from 1 to 19 and um, making sure that the var args thing works and we're calling rendered and now it should not look like a single link list anymore okay so we did one one tiny mistake and this one tiny mistake led to the whole thing not working so every time when we're inserting an element uh if we're inserting an empty element we should not insert the black one but but uh but the red one this is like the, the core of the yokasaki's thing so um when we do the add over here we should use the red one right so if it's an empty, we should always insert the red one and then see if it uh, if, if the balance is broken and then rebalance. Okay. So now, for example, if we, if you count the black nodes, then it always should be the same uh, the same amount, right? So this is one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Basically, it's it's always four, right? So uh, also, like, notice that in, in in most illustrations, you have you know either the black um, black layer and red layer, and then the black layer and then the red layer. Um, at least in the Okasaki's implementation, uh, it, it seems more likely that the red nodes are being surgically inserted just to maintain the balance. As and as you can see, also, you know, it's not a it's not a complete tree, and you ha you ended up with uh, two layers of sort of like unbalanced uh, version. But for all the practical reasons, this is actually uh, balanced enough. 
Okay, so one last thing that that, that, that I want to actually do um, before, before before we leave is that um, I want to refactor this code a little bit. So um, just so that it's it's uh, better suited for um, for educational purposes. I probably would, would not do something like this uh, if if it was a production code base, um, but but for you guys, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna give basically those those cases. I'm gonna give them names. Okay, so we can have a private type over here called case, and it's gonna be a oops, and it's gonna be a partial function. Uh, which just takes a set of s and produces a set of s okay and i'm gonna have top so i'm gonna have private lazy val top which is going to be one of those cases equals and uh so what now i'm just going to do i'm just going to copy that bring it over here actually the solution as well right so this is going to be the top and then we're going to have the bottom actually not the bottom uh, as i said i want to do it clockwise so i'm going to do the right one Okay, so I'm just going to take the right one, bring it over here, right? And then we're going to have the bottom one, bottom one, like that, which is this one. And we're going to have the left one, which is this one. Okay, and also we're gonna have the center one, right? So I'm gonna have that center. And what you can do is you can either do partial function identity, which I heard that they're removing from Scala, right? So identity is just a function defined in pre-def, like whatever you give it, it's gonna just give it back to you, and then just convert this total function to a partial function. And I heard that they're removing that, so I'm just I'm not gonna use that. Instead, I'm just gonna say, okay, case, uh, if it's basically it's the last one, right? So if it's already balanced, just give it back. It's sort of like identity, but but the partial one, right? So now if if this things compile, yeah, they do. The last thing that that we need to do is to create a lazy val called balance, right? So instead of instead of this, we're just gonna have this lazy val balance, uh, which is going to be one of those cases, basically, right? And uh, we're just gonna uh, go like this. We're gonna say right, or else, bottom, or else, left, or else center and we forgot something right so right bottom left we should have said it was a top okay so we're gonna have top or else right or else bottom or else left or else center right so this is gonna be our balance it's gonna be our par partial function right it should be exactly the same code okay so I'm gonna leave uh, both of them there uh, I'm gonna call this one balance to uh, I'm going to call balance for educational purposes or actually why should I leave it there it's all good um, I'm not going to leave it here there we go like this all right uh, also one other fun thing what, what you can do is uh, what did it do is that like a like this all right uh, another fun thing that you can do is that you could say is val balance to you can put all of, all of those cases in the sequence, right? So you can say top, right, bottom, left, center, and you can just reduce them, reduce left to or else, right? So this is gonna be the same thing. Let's switch them. So now we're actually calling this one, right? Uh, what's happening? Wrong name, balance, balance. There we go, balance. All right, exactly the same code. But I'm gonna remove this one. Kind of looks ugly. Um, there we go. Balance. All right. Cool. All right. So let's commit that. Let's commit that. And remember that we're not on the master branch, right? So if I'm gonna say um, get status, I'm gonna say also get branch, right? We're on the red black tree um, thing, right? So I'm gonna say get add dot, get commit hyphen am. Whoops. Why did I press enter? I did not want to press enter. All right. So um let's see get status get commit hyphen am and this is going to be video 11 and i'm going to call it red black uh let's do hyphen red black tree or trees tree let's, let's do a tree okay commit okay so now when i push so you're pushing the current branch always and uh, if you want to push all the branches you can say hyphen all right like this actually hyphen hyphen all like this push hyphen hyphen all and it should push them and let's check it 
Okay, so now if I refresh this, you're actually not going to see it because we are in the branch master, but you can actually switch it. You can say, let's switch it to red, black tree. And then we're going to see, oh, after the 10, video 11 happened, right? So you can still, you can still see that, right? So let's open it. And yeah, so we basically introduced the color. We changed the ad and that's it. So we added this whole color and Okasaki thing. All right, so I'm gonna include the links to all the papers and especially the, the one for Delicious and Scala uh, in the, in the, down in the description. Please remember that we don't have tests. If you wanna play more with red, black trees, you know, for example, if you wanna implement the deletion, uh, you know, you might as well want to implement the test. Um, uh, the test, uh, be because we're not gonna keep it, I wasn't really you know, passionate about. Um, also, uh, know that the red, black trees are usually uh, used for the sorted sets. So there are sets that maintain order, uh, but they can also be used for, for the uh, unsorted ones as, as we just used them. And uh, yeah, that's all I have for you today. Like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And most importantly, take care.